Hello and welcome back to Solo. Thank you for joining me again. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about disruption, disruptive practices. Uh, not exactly clickbait, I realise. Uh, and while we're on that, could you please uh, subscribe and click on the bell so you're notified for further solos. So why dis disruption and disruptive practices? Well, <clears throat> just in this last couple of weeks, um, there's been much talk in the UK uh, about changes into uh, to how we can protest. In other words, uh, we can protest, but this must not be disruptive, and that might also involve quietening the uh, the protesters. Uh, I was interested in the word disruptive because uh, a few months ago, when I was researching. Uh, 5G and uh, electromagnetic radiation and frequencies. Uh, I came across this term that was new to me but obviously very well known to uh, so many entrepreneurs and those people uh, in marketing uh, called uh, disruptive innovation. Uh, in fact I found that on the uh, Callahan Innovation uh, site uh, and there are basic uh, drives towards uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, and I began to learn that, in fact, in marketing, you want something that takes the market by storm and makes the previous, uh, I suppose, products redundant. And I can understand that. I can understand that uh, many years ago, the fountain pen, for instance, uh, disrupted the quill market and the ballpoint, the fountain pen market. Etc. Etc. And I discussed this with an entrep young entrepreneur that who I know and respect, and uh, so I did get some understanding about that. Uh, my initial reaction was was concern because my understanding of something that's disruptive has been something unpleasant. If you have a disruptive influence in your um, family, for instance, then it may not be a, a good thing. And uh, a David Mechanic, who's a sort of medical philosopher, said throughout the history of medicine, health has been seen as a condition of equilibrium and illness as a disruption of a balanced state. So I guess that's what I've been brought up with. The, we'll also know that there may be interventions we need to do in medicine that are disruptive. Um, maybe uh, uh, a stent, for instance, has to be put into the heart so that a better flow can take place. By and large, my, my work is to create harmony, I would have thought, and help somebody through, uh, through health, but not by disrupting them, but somehow creating harmony and equilibrium. Uh, also, just to add some nuance to this, uh, I found a quote from the Sufi poet Rumi, uh, who wrote that you have to keep breaking your heart uh, until it opens. In other words, uh, and I've seen that. I've seen that people go through crisis. In fact, that is their way of um, eventually healing deep stuff. Uh, however, I am concerned about um, why we should be silenced, uh, whereas it seems to be that um, the drive for automation can be disruptive. And so I found uh, somebody on LinkedIn uh, who gave this sort of interesting paper on uh, the soul of disruptive practices. Uh, and I'll quote, uh, machine learning can get your product or service in front of the right customers. That means, uh, I suppose, um, algorithms and artificial intelligence, uh, how you can reach people. And we're finding that marketing's all around us now. But how do you actually get them to take action? How do you turn that initial engagement into a lasting relationship? The answer to that is finding the soul of your brand. And this is in the, for the realm of the creative. Uh, that's because these moments of first contact are really the start of customer relationships, capturing people's attention in an instant in a way that fosters memorable and meaningful connection requires an artful touch. And that's the soul of marketing. Um, I would say some disquiet about that because, as I've said before, uh, often that can be trying to convince the person to buy something uh, 
through emotional means, and you'll see that in advertising all the time. In other words, their life will become so much better if they have this mobile phone or this new car. Uh, but there's something rather Machiavellian about that. But I do understand that that can be done um, actually with probably a degree of uh, morals and ethics. Uh, uh, and for instance, obviously I, I sort of resist that. My, this is my mobile phone, my dumb phone, uh, and all it is is a phone and a text, if I learn how to text, that is. So, um, here's to end this, a, a poem that I wrote uh, that probably goes over these points um, more succinctly than uh, what I've just said. And it's called Disruption, Part 1. The schools of modern entrepreneurs teach disruptive innovation. Consider the fountain pen that disrupted the quill, the ballpoint, the fountain pen, the mobile phone, the ballpoint, the 5G, the 4G, the 3G, the 2G, and the long forgotten original G. It is the way of progress to impress you and little old me. But in protest, we are now told we must not dare to disrupt. Our presence must be absent, our voices hushed, our wills quashed, our freedom thereby and ironically disrupted forever, with ne'er whimper nor whisper of dissent permitted by dreadful decree. And part two. The schools of biology teach harmony, cooperation and evolution, survival of the fittest and even the kindest. Should the physician disrupt or swear by Hippocrates and Apollo to first do no harm to his fellow man. Thank you very much. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.